Hey folks, Eric here from DigitalSneakers.com. Today I want to talk to you about the best GoPro for running. If you watch any of my videos, you know that I've been running and racing with a GoPro for about six years. And I went through most of the iterations of the GoPro. I didn't do the original one. I started with the three. I quickly went to the three plus. Look how big this thing is. I used to carry this around in races, most of the time in my hand. They then came out with the four and the four session. I skipped that one. The only difference between the four and the three plus was the four had an LCD screen built in, but it still came in that huge case. GoPro invited me to the GoPro family and they sent me a four session, which was great because it was about the size of an ice cube. From there, I went to the five. It had a little bit of stabilization involved, a little bit of a better microphone and an LCD an LCD screen built in, and it didn't need that big case to be waterproof. At the same time, they came out with the five session, has a built-in battery and a, a workhorse. From there, they went to the six, which has a little bit of a better microphone. Again, an LCD screen built in, you didn't need the case to be waterproof, and it had a little bit of a better sensor. In chronological order, they then came out with the Fusion, which is their 360 camera, great stability, and well, 360. And then just recently, the gimbal killer, the seven with digital stabilization that beats anything I've seen in any of these small cameras. So which camera do I use when I go out for a run? Because I have a lot to choose from. These are my go-tos. The Session 5, because of its compactness. The 7, because of its digital st stabilization. And the Fusion, and I'll get into why the Fusion. Let's talk first about what all of these cameras have in common. Well, they all take stills. They all have some sort of stabilization involved, although the 7 with the digital stabilization is the gimbal killer and in a class of its own. Well, clearly they're all waterproof. They all shoot 4K video, although Fusion is in a class by itself with 5.2K. They all have voice control. They all connect to your phone, which means that you can download some photos or video real quick and get some clips up right after the race. They all take 10 megapixel stills, although the Fusion, again, in a class by itself, takes 18 megapixel. They all have time-lapse and they all mount on any and every of the GoPro mounts. Although, again, the Fusion is gonna be in a little bit of class by itself because it's bigger and it's heavier. So let's do a quick analysis of the benefits of the cameras and when I use which one why. Let's talk about the Hero Session 5 for a second. This camera is a workhorse. I carry this for more marathons than I can think of and it always outperformed. The one negative that I would say about this camera is that it has an internal battery. So if you were running low or you ran out of battery, then you didn't have an option to carry a battery with you and change it out. Once the battery went dead during a race, it was dead. The stabilization was cursory at best and I had to use a lot of uh, post-production stabilization. So I don't think that that was uh, where it could have been. And obviously they knew that because they continued to improve it on the uh, six and then even the seven again in a class of its own. One of the other things that I that that, that I don't like about it is that it uh, doesn't come with an LCD screen. A lot of the GoPros come with LCD screens now. It's small, it's easily stowable, it shoots 4K, it shoots stills. If you're looking for something a little more budget conscious, this is gonna be your option. So let's go to the seven. We're, we're, I'm gonna get to the Fusion in a little bit. The seven is in a class all by itself. All of the advertising that you're seeing about getting rid of shaky video, uh, shaky video is dead, uh, 4K awesomeness, it lives up to the hype. Look at the, this video that I shot at the 5K the day prior to the Chicago Marathon. look at something that I shot without stabilization while running the New York City Marathon. You can see that there's no comparison. I was not carrying a gimbal. On the downside, I used up almost the entire battery during the 5K. So that's what about a few minutes in the hotel room to record an intro, a few minutes during the lineup, in the corrals, and then during the race. So let's give it a half hour. On the plus side, you can carry an extra battery with you and look how easy this is to switch out. Now let's go to my absolute, absolute, absolute go-to camera for when I'm running any race. And that's the Fusion. And why? Well, a couple of things. The stabilization is phenomenal. Not as good as the Hero 7 Black, but Un unbelievable. I don't 
carry this camera because I want to shoot in 360. I carry it because of the options that you can use in post-production when you are putting your video together. You can do things like this. You can do things like this. You can do things like this. And you can do things like this. I love the fact that if you carry it high enough on a GoPro that you can put it above your head and it actually looks like you have a drone with you. Battery life is unbelievable. With the new GoPros, I haven't really had a problem with the battery life because here's the thing, when I shoot video of a race, I'm not shooting the entire race. Look, folks, nobody wants to see an entire race from gun to finish line. It's just boring to watch a bunch of bodies running for that long. What I do is I look for something interesting to film. If I'm running by, say, the entrance to Chinatown in the Chicago Marathon, or I'm running up the 59th Street Bridge in New York City. That's gonna be interesting to look at. So that's what I'm gonna be filming. I'm gonna turn the camera on right before I get there. I'm gonna turn the camera off after I leave. And I'm just gonna carry the camera for most of the race without it being on. So like at the end of a race, how much film do I actually have? I don't know, maybe an hour's worth, but probably not even that much. And I'm piecing together at most three and a half to four and a half minutes because nobody wants to see anything longer than that. Trust me, look at, the, look at YouTube and check out all of the views that you're gonna have on some of the longer videos and all the views that you're gonna have on some of the shorter videos. So uh, that is my guide to what is the best GoPro for you when you're running a race. I'm gonna have some links below to purchase the GoPros. Just know that these go to my Amazon affiliate account and I do get a couple of shekels from each of these sales, but please note that it just really goes to help fund the channel. I'm not uh, getting rich off of that by any stretch of the imagination. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this video, smash that like button below, get it up in the YouTube algorithm a little bit more. And if you like gear reviews, race reviews, or anything endurance sports related, please hit that subscribe button, but more importantly, the bell next to it so you get notified when I put up new videos every week. And I will see you next time.